The High Tech Nomad here, and today Amazon released a new feature for your Amazon Echo. Now you can say things like, Alexa, read me my email. For Mormon, for the past 24 hours, you have 217 unread emails. None are marked important. First message from generic spam. Well, that's pretty much of an epic fail. But stay tuned, I'm going to show you how to make it so that Alexa only reads the emails that you want to hear. That and more on this edition of The High Tech Nomad. Hi, I'm Orman Beckles, The High Tech Nomad, and when I, I was very excited to find that Amazon Echo will now read my email. And that was the first thing that came up, which is it reads all your emails. So I had to come up with a way that she only reads the emails that I'm interested in. Now, we're going to have to do a little bit of jury rigging or jerry rigging or MacGyvering or Rube Goldberging it. Do you guys know who Rube Goldberg is? If you know, if you know who that name is, leave a message down in the comments. But anyway, what I'm saying is, is we're going to have to do a little... Uh, trickery here to get it so that we only hear the emails that we want. Here's what we need to do. We need to set up a dummy email account on Google. This is where we're going to send the email from the people we're interested in hearing about on our Echo. Now it doesn't matter what the email address is because we're never going to give this email address out to anyone. But it does have to be a new email box that you set up because we're going to lock this email box up really, really tight because we don't want anything in there. No spam, no nothing. All we want to get into this email box are the emails that we send it. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So in my case, I called mine uh, Alexa email Beckles at gmail.com. Now, you need to know how to create a rule in your current email box, whether that be Apple or Outlook. But the good news is all email boxes support rules and basically what we're going to do is say when we get email from such and such a person we're going to send it to this new dummy email box it's not a big deal because remember you're not going to have 50 or 100 addresses you're going to probably have five your mother your father your girlfriend your boyfriend work whatever we're going to tell it when you get email from any of these five people and only these five people uh, send it to this dummy email box and then the last thing we're going to need is the username and password from your current email account. And you need that because we're going to have to send the email back through the account, but we'll get into that later. Now, I'm not going to show you how to set up a Gmail account. You can all figure that out. Just go to gmail.com, click on create new account and go ahead and put it in. Now, while you may put in not a phony name, but the name for the account, please make sure to put in your correct birthday because Gmail is very picky about that. If they can't verify the birth date or if they contact you and you're not a real birthday, uh, they may try and close the account at some point in time. So when you're doing this with them, always use your correct uh, birthday and make sure that you reference your correct email address where it says uh, recovery email address. That way, if they have any problem, they'll send you an email and you'll get it. So the next part we need to do is we need, this is my regular email. You need to go into your regular email account and you need to set up a rule to send the email that we're interested in over to our new dummy box that we just created. Now, again, I'm using Outlook, but all email boxes, including Apple, do this. You just have to find where it is. If you're having difficulty with this particular part, please send me a comment down the vault below and I will help you out. So we're going to go to rules. We're going to go to manage rules. We're going to say new rule. And we're going to start from scratch. Usually uh, here it is. start with a blank rule. And in this case, it says do this when I receive a message. Okay, so we're going to do this when I receive a message and it says, here are all the things and I'm going to say from a specific person. Well, that's from a specific person. But when we click on this, we're able to add people's email addresses. So for this demonstration, I'll go ahead. I'm going to type them manually. You could have picked from your list, but I'm going to just type them in manually. I'm going to say Orman at Beckles. And then I'll say uh, info at the high tech nomad. Okay. So you got ads, oh, it's a semicolon. Okay. 
So you get that. So if we get email it's from either of these two people, there we go. So if we get, see, it says Orman C. Beckles or info at the high tech nomad or whatever. So again, you're not going to have a lot of these. You might have 10, 10 email addresses that you really care about. But any of that. So now it says, when I get email from one of these individuals, what do you want me to do? And we're going to come over to the next step. And in this case, we're going to look for redirect. Now, you may be tempted to use forward, but forward is going to cause us a problem. And I'll explain the difference. Redirect will send the email. It redirects it right to them. So when the email shows up in the dummy mailbox, it will have the original email address and the person's name because it's been redirected. If you take a detour, they don't ch make you change cars. They, 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 you use the same car to get to where you're going. If you use forward, you're going to, it's going to take that email, put it in an email and send it from you. We don't want that because then when we try to reply, it's going to get all bollocked up. So we don't want to do that. So you want to make sure that you use redirect. Now, just so you know, this is not going to take it from your main mailbox, which is good. That's because you, you want to have it there. This is just for the convenience of being able to say, hey, you know, what's my email? You can reply to it. And then when you get back to your computer, you'll still need to delete it. Some people may want to go ahead and delete it afterwards. I wouldn't uh, just because um, I'm like that. But if you wanted to, you could. So you could say do that and then delete it if you wanted to. I wouldn't. I'm going to just say redirect it. That way I still have a copy of my mailbox. I'll know that I used it. Okay, so we say go ahead and do it. Uh, we all, we'd have to, I'm sorry, redirect it. So when we click on redirect, then we have to put in the email address where we want to send it. So in my case, it's Alexa email beckles at gmail.com. All right, so that's the email address of the dummy mailbox where this is going to be sent. So again, if I get email from this email address or this email address, a copy will be redirected to our dummy mailbox. That's what we want. So that then when we say check our email and it checks that dummy mailbox, we'll only hear those four or five emails. So we have our special Gmail account set up just for this project. Going to settings, go to settings again, and go to where it says filters and blocked addresses. We're gonna set up a rule, and if you put the minus sign in front of the email address, that means accept, that's the exception, okay? So I'm gonna add one here now. I'm gonna say, uh, uh, we'll use our, our main one, which is uh, questions at the high tech nomad.com. Okay. So what happens is going to be this. If any email comes in and it's not this, it's not from Orman at Beckles and it's not from questions at the high tech nomad, then delete it. Isn't that cool? So just by putting that minus sign in front of the email addresses, if it's not one of those two email addresses, it'll automatically delete it. You do have to add every email address on here with the minus sign of the ones that you want to get. But remember, we've already said we're not talking about 50 or 100 emails. You only want to really hear emails from like maybe five or 10 people. So this is not going to be a huge pain in the butt. You're going to add the five or 10 email addresses. So we have this part set up and we reply to an email through our Amazon Echo. When it sends it back, it's going to send it back with the email address of this account, which is not what we want because that's going to throw people off. They sent it to me. Luckily for us, Gmail already has that feature built in. So we're going to go to accounts and import. And as you can see right here, we have send email as now by default, it will send it back as the email address that this box is set up on. However, you can add another address. And once you put in your information for that other address, so the other Gmail account, or in this case, my exchange account, it sends an email to that account saying, hey, this guy wants to send email and pretend he's you. Is that okay? 
I say yes. And once I do that, now this Gmail account will send out email, but it will look like it's coming from my regular account. All right, boys and girls, we're almost done. Now all we have to do is tell Amazon to look at our new email account. So on your phone, you have to go to, cause you have to do it on the phone. You can't do it on the web. Go to your apps, find your Amazon Alexa app. Let's go into that. You're going to click on settings, which is the three lines in the upper left hand corner. Then we're going to go down and click on settings again at the bottom of the list. And then when it comes up, we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for email and calendar. Now I say it that way because it email was just added. Calendar has been there for a while. So if you go in and yours says calendar, but does not say email and calendar, then you're going to need to update the app and get the latest version. I found in most cases, it was easier just to uninstall the app and then reinstall it. And when I reinstalled it, I got the right version. Every time I tried to do an update, it uh, didn't update properly. So when you finally get it to say email and calendar, go ahead and click on that. Now you can have multiple accounts that you can check the email on and check the calendar on. As you can see, I have one here already for my calendar. This is the calendar that I use, but I don't want it to check the email from this account because as we've already seen, I'm, I've got too much email. So we're going to go ahead and click on the plus sign to add a new account. Now we have a choice here. We have four choices. Obviously we're going to choose the first choice, which is the Google, which is the easiest one to use, but it says we also could use Microsoft, but you have to have a certain one, like a hot sink or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then it says for Apple and exchange, I'm not even looking at that email. But again, because of the, what we're doing, we're going to be talking to a Google account. So really Apple people, you can do this as well, because all you're doing is forwarding your Apple email to this Google dummy box. And then we're going to attach to this dummy box. So you are in luck if you want to do this as well. So go ahead and click on the plus sign for the Google to add a Google account. Now it's giving us a choice of what do we want to do with this account? Do we want to read the email and the uh, calendar or just the email? So we're going to go ahead and turn off calendar. We're going to click on connect account, and then it's going to show us all the available Google accounts that we have on this device. We're going to click in this case on the Alexa email Beckles at Gmail. It says, is it okay to go ahead and connect this up? We're going to click on allow and Bob's your uncle. We're all set. We're ready to go. Now let's go ahead and test this thing out. All right, so let's try this out. Um, I'm gonna actually just do it all on the phone here. So as you can see here in my email box, this is my standard email box. I have a bunch of different emails, all right? So the first thing we'll do is we'll check and see what it thinks is there now, which should be nothing because I've already done this test once, but let's go ahead and try it. Alexa, check my email. There are no unread emails for Orma from the last 24 hours. All right, which is not surprising. Remember, it's looking at that special email box that we set up, so there's no emails in there. So now let's just send a couple of emails over. So I'm gonna go to my Gmail account, if I can Sorry, find I'm it. Having trouble understanding. Oh, it's all right, my dear. So let's just close everything else up. Yeah, D -D -D -D. as you can see, I leave a lot of stuff open. Okay, so let's go into my Gmail account and we will send a couple of emails. Okay, so there we are. So I'm going to send one from the, well, actually let's send one from one that we know won't go through. So we're going to send it from this other account that I have and I'm going to send it to myself. Let's move that out of the way here. So I'm going to send it to myself. Okay. And we will call this, we will call this uh, test nine. So we'll call it test nine. All right, and I'm just going to write test because it's not going to make any difference because it ain't going to make it. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll send that one off. Okay, now we will go ahead from the account that we have said K 
can send email to this and we'll go ahead and we'll send in an email from there and we will actually call this test 12 and or test 13 and we'll say hello did you have a good day okay and we're going to close enough yeah close enough then okay so we'll go ahead and we'll send that one then we will go to yet another account uh, i'll go with my regular account and i'll try to also send one from here now remember the hightechnomad at gmail.com that's the only one that i put the minus sign on that's the only one that's going to be allowed into our special email box so we'll call this test 14 and we'll just call it test because this isn't going to get through either so we'll go ahead and hit save okay so three emails have been sent let's go to my regular email box first and see what we have so you'll see in my regular email box i have a couple of different emails uh, we have the test 14 the test 13 the test 9 test okay the only one that's going to make it is that test 13 because that's the only one one that we said send to the mailbox and two that's the only one we said if you get an email from this one accept it all right so let's go ahead now and see what happens when we ask to check our email alexa check email for orman from the last 24 hours you have one unread email from the high-tech nomad test 13 what would you like to do? Read, reply, delete, archive, or next? Read. Hello, did you have a good day? What would you like to do? Reply. What's your reply to the high-tech nomad? I had a great day, mostly because I have the best followers in the world. Here is your reply. I had a great day mostly because I have the best followers in the world. Would you like to send it now? Yes. Okay, sending. This was the last unread email. Okay, so it went ahead and so do that. And now the proof is in the pudding. Let's go back to my Gmail account and let's go into the high tech nomad one and give that a send. And here we are, Bob's your uncle. There's a reply from Orman. And we go through, and I have a great day because I have the best follow. It should be followers. I didn't pronounce it right. Followers in the world. Okay? So that's how to set this up so that you only get the emails that you want read to you by your Amazon Echo. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. And we now have a Patreon account. I have... Sadly, as of this um, this video, I have no patrons. I need a patron. A patron. One dollar a month. Twelve dollars a year. I appreciate that. In any event, um, I'm going to take some of these subjects in the future that are longer subjects, and I'll just I'll overview them here on the YouTube channel. But I'll actually post all that good stuff on the Patreon channel because you know there if it's a it's a one hour video or whatever. But I know a lot of you are saying that you really like it when. I almost, you know, go step by step and do it in real time. You guys really like that. But I can't do that on the YouTube channel because it just doesn't work. So in any event, until the next time, this is Armin Beckles, the high-tech nomad, signing out.